It's not me. But, 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 it couldn't be the chairman, right? I don't know who it is, but whoever it is should just come forward. <clears throat> yes, yes, everyone, please just calm down, you know? Edgeworth, is that all you got? Where's the evidence to suspect me? No, oh, so you've fallen silent. But you've gone too far, you see? I won't forgive you anymore. It's too late for regrets, you know? I'm a very important man, you see? Former Chief Prosecutor and Chairman of the PIC. <laughs> it's fine if you're not prepared to face the fire, you know? Because you see... Either way, it won't make any difference. God, he's so ugly to look at. I'm gonna bully you. You've been rambling on for quite a while about the most trivial details, you know? Like the location of the murder, the order of the wounds, and um, what else was there? It just doesn't matter, you know? Cause you see, none of what it, uh, that means anything, you know? Think about it. You got to suspect herself, uh, the suspect herself saying she killed the victim. That's all that matters, you see? She'll even get a lighter sentence with her confession, you know? Now then, if there are any contradictions to be, uh, be my guest. How can that be considered a testimony? There must be a contradiction somewhere. That person, he's very important, isn't he? Mr. Edgeworth, it's all right. Let's just give up. Surely I must have killed her. I can even remember it. Don't be tied down to your muddled memories. If you want to believe in something... Believe in your own innocence. Believe in me, who believes in you. But... My opponent is the PRC chairman. Taking him down won't be easy. However, he has underestimated me. If I can take advantage of that... The autopsy report and the questions about the conductor. Were you even listening? No. Talk is cheap, you know. I was listening, you see. But I didn't think, think much of it, you know. You didn't think much of it, even after I brought up all those issues. Perhaps your judgment needs to be questioned, rather than my ability as a prosecutor. Huh. That's a good one, Edgeworth. But you see... How does it mean nothing? How can you say it doesn't matter? Are you trying to suppress the truth? Well, you see, it simply doesn't matter as much as you say it does, you know? You see, Edgeworth, you're only saying it matters to avoid the real issue here. Hold it. it may be true she confessed, however, that does not make it true. She is suffering from memory loss, so we must question the credibility of her testimony. Objection. Jesus. Even if you say that now, it still won't solve anything. What good it will it do to deny her confession? Sounds like nonsense to me. Wanna try asking her something? Asking her again? I think she'll say that she's the murderer again, though. Farewell. Let's try asking her again one last time. I'd like to hear it from Kay herself, whether or not she is the culprit. Huh? From me? Will that be alright? If this goes poorly, it will be quite unfavorable for you. I do not mind, however, I shall ask Kay the question myself. I'm moved to tears, you know. Oh, how touching, you know. How very touching. Fine then, I'll let you ask her. However, I have one condition. If all this proves to be a waste of time, Then what will be the end of it? How's that sound? That will be the end of it. The end? Of the hearing? Yes, yes. It seems that you can be smart once in a while, Sebastian. In other words, you see if she confesses again, 
K Faraday will be found, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Guilty. Yep, it's a fun idea. Guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, that's right. That's harsh. But either way, if I do nothing, she'll be declared guilty. Gay! Yes? I know what I'm asking of you is unreasonable, but please, I want you to answer me. It doesn't matter how tiny it is. Do you... Do you remember anything? Anything that would prove your innocence. Why... Why would you go that far for me? I need you. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm too scared to remember. Because I might have done something even worse. If that were the case, I would only make things worse for you, Mr. Edgeworth. K. Faraday must have been a despicable criminal. Someone who betrayed your trust. Don't worry. We've only known each other for a short while, but I know you very well. I'd even say that I know you better than yourself now that you've lost your memories. Oh, God! You cannot possibly be the culprit because the tr your true identity is. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God! It would be this, right? The Great Thief. The thief is an. Uh, they are a noble thief who would never stoop to murder. Hit you in the head with the badge until you remember something. No, it's useless. After all. Are you fucking getting it? No matter what, that memory still remains. This image that's stuck in my head. I just can't get it out. That means I must have. Hold it. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no clear evidence to prove that you're the culprit. Besides your own confession. Remember what I said. You must believe in yourself. Or perhaps you cannot trust my words. No, that's not it. It's because you are trying to save someone like me. You've already lost so much. All for my sake. I can't bear it anymore. Please just give up. I see now. I thought it was strange. The reason you were acting like you wanted to be found guilty was because you were concerned about me. That is just like you, Kay. It's because you're a good person, Mr. Edgeworth. Unfortunately, I may fall short of your expectations. I'm not trying to be a good person. King. No matter how much you may want me to give up, I'll keep trying to save you. That is the nature of who I am. Whether or not it is a burden for you is none of my concern. Fucking stop trying to act cool. Okay, believe in yourselves once more. You're a noble great thief. What you should be doubting is your memory of committing the murder. That is my wish above all else. Please. I... Breaking out. Scream. Gay. Pull yourself together. What is it? Did you remember something? Killing her. If she remembers something now, ha <laughs> ha, it would be like a bad movie. Bull. Yeah, bullshit, buddy. Ha! <laughs> Got his ass. Bull. Prosecutor Edgeworth, please ask her to clarify. Um... Well, okay, what do you mean by bull? I remember now. The person in the red raincoat had that with her. Oh, and a burn mark. The stuffed uh, bull bulldog, I'm certain of it. Is that true? Is that true, defendant? Yes, your honor. The court hereby accepts the defendant's statement as a new piece of testimony. Objection. Fuck off. Quit messing around, Courtney. A testimony, a testimony like that cannot be accepted, you know. Your objection has been noted, sir. However, testimony about the victim's belongings has been lacking up until now. Objection. Listen to my objection! <laughs> Nevertheless, you know, her vague memories cannot be trusted, you know. Oh, then that means her fucking confession's thrown out, bitch. Shut the fuck up. You can't have it both ways. Her memories are vague. 
That would be bad for us as well. Didn't you say this earlier yourself, Mr. Chairman? Since we have the suspect's confession, we don't need to worry about the tri trivial details. Thank you. Jesus, is Courtney actually going to be based? If we decide to doubt our memories, then we must also doubt our confession, which is the main foundation of our case. Are you willing to do that, sir? Uh, you're right. Well, never mind, then I shall leave it to you. Thank you very much. We did it. It was touch and go there for a while, though. However, those words of Co Judge Courtney just now. It almost feels as if she's on our side. Nah, I see it to believe it, okay? Calm down. Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you know anything about this stuffed animal? The stuffed animal case spoke of must have been this. We found it in the storeroom. It is believed to be one of the victim's uh, items for the auction. This is... Hmm. Do you know something about it, Justine? Yeah, this is uh, from the fucking president's thing. No, it's just a bit different from what I imagined. Indeed, it's certainly not what I would have expected the victim to be carrying. Let's examine that very suspicious looking nook and cranny. There's gonna be blood on it. Oh, wait. There's a fucking tuft missing. Oh no, there's a blossom on it. Never mind. A cherry blossom petal is stuck to its soft fur. Speaking of which, there was also some stuck to the red raincoat. Cherry tree. Was there one blooming on the flu uh, viewing platform? Yes. Seems safe to assume this was taken outside. However, why would the victim be carrying something like this? Yeah, look at the fucking ear hole. Something in here? Left horn is missing. Hmm. There's a hole in this stuffed animal. Seems this hole is where the horn is inserted into. I guess its head isn't stuffed with cotton. I wonder what's inside. Perhaps I should examine the other side. The right horn seems to be fine, but the entire balance feels a little off. This horn looks like it can move. What? Oh, oh, oh what? What was that buzzing sound? It seems this toy is equipped with a recording device. Oh my god. And the... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Ah! Is this the moment of the murder? Who could have recorded something like this? Stop, animal. This is a scoop! There ain't no doubt about it. This here was what I heard. We cannot verify when those voices were recorded. It's also possible that they weren't related to the case at all. If only we had some video as well. That's hogwash. I'm telling you, that right there was the conversation that I heard. The victim was holding on to it, right? I reckon it must have been recorded when she got attacked. That certainly is a possibility. However, your testimony alone is insufficient. I require something with a little more credibility. Again, her words. It almost sounds as if she's trying to give me advice. Judge Courtney. There's no mistake that those voices were from the incident. Please recall the audio that was recorded by the stuffed animal. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. If we compare this part of the recording with a certain piece of evidence, we can prove it. This evidence shows that the recording took place during the moment of the crime. Fuck. She masks? I... I... I got no fucking clue. Um, you can't, um, you can't hide the burn from me. Ah. Uh, no, I feel like it would, it's not that, it's not that, 
It's not that. It's not K's. Not the ticket stub, not the purple flower, not the grand pamphlet. but not the K's memory, not the key card, not the candel candelabra. It could be this, maybe? Uh, let's try this. The autopsy report. Oh, thank God. The part shows that the recording took place during the crime. Burn mark. I remember clearly what that voice said. You can't hide that burn from me. On the victim's hand, there was a burn mark. Indeed. It just happened to match up, you see? But what of it? Hey, yeah, someone's mad. According to case testimony, the victim had been holding the stuffed animal. And it just happened to record the, a characteristic of the victim, namely the burn. It's just a coincidence. I mean, it, it could happen, right? I do not think so. It is hard to believe that all of this is simply a coincidence. The voices of the stuffed animal were most likely recorded during the incident. One of the voices must belong to the true culprit. From what we've heard, it must have been the one who was doing most of the talking. But what's the point? In the end, we still can't tell their gender or identity. Indeed, because I had been using voice changers. I can't be helped. If this the situation has become clear. The conversation Miss Hart overheard was between the culprit and Miss Crane. That's what I've been trying to tell you from the start. And from this, we will understand a new fact. Please enlighten us then. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Chairman. Do what you want. According to Miss Hart's testimony just before the incident, Two people came up from the auction hall using the lift. It must have been the conductor and one of the auction guests. They probably went there to settle the payment after winning a bid. And then it was there that the crime was carried out. Since the auction continued after the crime took place, we were led to a single truth. This new fact that we have arrived at. The culprit is the conductor. Since the conductor was the only one who could keep the auction going, we can conclude that the deceased victim could not have been the conductor. Um, uh, Justine? Please be quiet here, okay? If the conductor was not the victim, then they must have been the culprit. Please wait, that alone is insufficient. Of course, even I do not intend to rely upon the process of elimination. Mad? Certain traces left at the crime scene led me to believe that the culprit is the conductor. Well then, show it to us. What were the traces left at the crime scene that led to my deduction? Deduce that the culprit. It'd be this, right? Because he can open it. He can open that box. A regular person couldn't do that. culprit was the conductor, they would have wanted to hide something. I just want to present that. What did they hide? Other than the fucking blood! And I already showed what they hid! The body! Uh, 
this. Okay, I'm I'm fucking lost. I want to die. I just don't under fucking stand. Oh my god. It's nothing on this page, okay? I know that for a fact. It's literally nothing on this page. It's not the candelabra. It could be the autopsy report, I guess. It's not, but it could be. I don't know why I want one. Uh, key card? Uh, maybe? I'm like running out of fucking things though. Victim's letter, this isn't a trace of something left behind. I'm just going to go by the fucking words they used. Conductor's clothes. Already tried that. Didn't work. Plot of testimony. Didn't fucking work. Plot of photo. Maybe. Like, it just feel like it's this. Meeting room. Like, it could, I guess it could be this rather than the blood. Like, on the ground. But I feel like it would just be the blood on the ground. Or at least that's what I would personally do. I mean, it... It has to be one of these three things. I've already done fucking two. Take that. Oh. This isn't traces. Fuck off. The culprit purposely left a large amount of blood on the meeting room floor. In doing so, we are led to believe that the meeting room had been the scene of the crime. It was a ruse by the true culprit to hide the blood that had fallen into the storeroom, from the storeroom. So we wouldn't find out about the existence of the black market auction, correct? I feel like it could have been literally any of those three and it would have counted. Fuck off. Indeed. If the culprit had been unrelated to the auction, there would have been no need to do such a thing. Ergo, the culprit could have only been the conductor. Well then, do you have any ideas as to who the conductor might possibly be? The auction hall is at the PIC meeting room. And furthermore, there's a storeroom above it. The conductor must have been, at the very least, a member of the PIC. A little scared there, buddy? So, in other words, you suspect me, I take it? <laughs> Isn't it natural to suspect you? The one with the most authority in the PIC? Objection. You are quite capable. I'll give you that much, at least. But you know, like I said before, you're far too naive. I keep just burning papers. You have nothing, you know. There's no evidence that proves I'm the culprit, you see. If, by some chance, you do have some evidence, when, then why don't you present it? Uh, well, that's not important here, okay? Do I have evidence that Blaze is the culprit? No. No. I got no fucking shot. Blaze himself has suggested that he is the criminal, and he has been showing that strange self-confidence for a while now. He knows that there is not a single piece of evidence left behind to incriminate him. Right now. Ha! Huh, ha! Huh, ha! Huh. If you play with fire, you're gonna get burned, Edgeworth! Just kidding. I always wanted to say that, you know? Well then, Courtney. Holding it? I reckon I just remembered something too. What? You lost your memories too? Nah, that ain't it. Something just popped in my head right now. Very well, please tell us. Objection. Courtney! Could you tell me what you're doing? Prosecutor Edgeworth will not give up until we have destroyed every last possibility. I'm destroying every possibility so that he will never oppose us again. Oh, huh, okay. And Justine, I don't really know what's going on, but well said. Pops, I'm going to help too. After all, he's the one who's wrong. 
Fine then, let's hear what she has to say. Well then, Miss Hart, please proceed. Sure thing. Just leave it to me. Please make sure you only tell the truth. I ain't that. Ain't that a matter of course. I'm a bona fide journalist of justice, you know. Somehow I feel uneasy. Y'all saying the culprit was the conductor, right? That means the victim was a customer. Now, here's where it gets a might strange. You see, there were 11 people at the auction. When the auction continued after the incident, I went straight on over and snuck a peek down below. You don't mean. That's exactly what I mean. All 11 people are still there. Present and accounted for. What? Oh, are you sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. I saw it with my own two eyes. Um, so it started with 11, and there were still 11 people after the murder? Was it a ghost? You know, Sebastian, normally a prosecutor would call that a contradiction, you know? <laughs> that one was funny, though. Were well, there really no changes in the auction at all? Then how did she get in there? Really? I'm telling ya! The auction just went on like normal. Ah. Uh, but, uh, there was one itty bitty thing, though. What was it? You know those hammers y'all been seeing at the auction? Like the one lit the like the one that lady is using over there. An auction gavel, perhaps? Yep, that's one. All of a sudden, I couldn't hear the sound no more. It had been banging away just prior to it. Sound of the gavel. Does that have anything to do with the case? What? No clue. If Miss Hart's testimony is the truth, then this, ma uh, this matter has taken a grave turn. If the victim was neither the conductor nor a customer, the very foundation of a, pro a prosecutor Edward's reasoning would collapse. Mm. Just as prevails as they say. I hope you've learned your lesson, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth. There really is nothing we can do. It's not over yet. Some mysteries still remain. Like the autopsy. I have to think. If I don't, then Kay will be. Did you get your the answer you wanted? Well then, a deal's a deal. Please wait, Mr. Chairman. I believe it is still too early to make a judgment. There are still a few mysteries left in this case. Until we have solved them, all we cannot uh, we cannot call this a conv complete victory. Isn't that right, Prosecutor Edgeworth? I was expecting you to shout. Hold it, like you always do. Uh, yes, of course. Once again, Judge Courtney has come to my aid. Well then, what is it? What sort of mysteries are left? Well, of course, there's a contradiction in the autopsy report. That kind of thing. Who cares? 